people. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Anna. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just distracted. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they um, they tell me that Kuma Space tells tells us that when kids come in here, they play tag immediately, right? They run all over the room. <laughs> I want to play bumper cars. Right. Yeah. But wait, but the tag is funny because you, no, nobody goes any faster than anybody else. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> like that video so, video game instinct kicks in, I guess. Yeah. So, but if if I'm I'm going to move away from you right now, and when I do, you can't hear me anymore, right? So I'm still talking. I was still talking. So if you move away, you can't hear. But so if you want to have a private conversation with Harry, for example. You would go off and have that private conversation. Whoops. You would go off oh, and have hear, that right? private yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, you can have groups of people, I guess. So, oh, as you move away, you want to. Yeah. Cool. What's the, um, what are. Chris, we don't see you yet. I wonder what that's about. There's a pool table? Me. There's a pool table. You can you can go explore. We'll, I'll go. I'll yell at you and, and bring you back when other people come. Um, you actually go up by the piano. Go up by the piano. Oh wait, I wanted to tell you that there is a map um, at the bottom. You can see what oh, the yeah. whole room looks like. Oh neat. Yeah. So you can go oh, explore. Wow. You can go explore. Well, there he is Chris Sloan's. Hello. Cousin. Cool. Hi. I feel like we're in a speakeasy. I don't know if that's because I'm reading Gatsby with my students right now, but that is the vibe I'm getting from this room. Well, Anna, Anna, come with me then. Hold on. Where are you? Come. I'm, Wait, you I'm right beside. Oh, <clears throat> hit map again. You yeah. do know you do know you're using the arrow keys, right? Yes. Come on up here. Follow me. Oh my God. And you can pour yourself a drink. Or a drink. Do I just click on it? Yes. And now, oh, now you have your they drink. They knew. They knew. Okay. Let's say it is a speakeasy. It is. It is literally a speakeasy. That is too and, cool. And, and bring your drink over here. Oh, Chris, I had no idea you were so talented. <laughs> it's pretty smooth over here. Oh, Harry, oh. Harry, yeah, yeah. Did you know about the piano? You're by the piano. You can play it. Well, it plays. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Just, I was wondering about the jukebox down in the corner. Does yeah, it do it? I wish you could. Yeah. Okay. That's hysterical. It's so cool. So I'm going to put my microphone on. Um, okay. So if anybody comes in, I can tell them to come find us this way. And oddly, I have it set so that I, no matter where you are in the room, you will be able to hear me. Um, but you'll want to talk back to me and I won't hear you if you're not close. To me. <laughs> Let's leave it what like that for now. That's what does a the different... range indicator do? So turn that on. Okay. Um, if you, whoop. Oh, I see. What do you if see? You, if you go outside that circle, that's probably your range of where you're going to be able to hear people, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't. And I'm going to make it smaller okay. now. All right, this makes sense. It's I was... uh, going in and out for me. Huh. That makes sense. My range thing didn't work. It's a good going. thing you didn't have this when you had a guest speaker because everybody would be playing all night. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, that is the question. Um, uh. How, uh, so, um, so I have it on quiet now, which means you have to be closer. But my range thing is just lighting up my screen. Oh, I know why. You're Sorry. too zoomed in. That was no, my problem. No, I have my I have my megaphone on. Okay. Oh, well, that makes so sense. Can hear you. Okay, now do you see how the quiet is a smaller circle? Yeah. Um, I'm going to change it back. I'm in. I'm in settings right now, and you, I can make you a co-host, and you can do this too. But and now it's a little bit larger. 
that's uh-huh. normal. Range, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you were in small groups for or something, you might want to make it smaller. Um, I've been, yeah. we've been, Jessica Hernandez Spear and I have been using it like when we have just a couple of times, but when we have kids working in one corner, we'll make it smaller and the two of us can go off and talk. And so. How has that worked with other kids then being in different groups? I mean, so, like, are they actually, yeah, does it work okay? It has, it, it has just been a small group of kids so far, like two or three at a time. And so, but they they come in at different times and they're like oh. doing independent work. So that's actually been really nice to be able to say, Hey, Tristan, come up here and I'll work with you. And Mr. Hernandez that's Spear cool. will work with, you know, Dowry. Yeah. And so they, that works out pretty nicely. Um, so you said two to three students total in the whole room or two to three students in your small groups? Total in the total room. Because there's uh-huh. not, not good attendance in that class at this point. I got you. We're sort of New York. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there a maximum number of students that can be in a room at a the time? There's 25. 25. Okay. Not bad. Mm-hmm. But there and, are there are multiple rooms. Yeah, that's what I was going right. to ask. Yeah. So you can go to different rooms. Um, quick show around also the chat. And you can click on it. There is mm-hmm. the option to uh-huh. chat with people nearby. If you hit nearby in the chat, you'll get the people who are in the in the range, right? Okay. But you but it won't go to anybody else outside of that range. You mm-hmm. can also send individually, obviously. Right. Is that how you go to Oh, okay. So how do you go hmm. if you want to move people why would you want to move people from this room to another room? The, the share screen function works within each room. So if you wanted them to go see something else or share something, like a, a small group of a writing group, for example, might go to a different okay. room and share their screen with each other. Okay. Um, you can, you can see that you can chat with across the rooms, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thinking yeah, a lot I mean, about, uh, mm-hmm. I tried to do a jigsaw activity and it was it was a mess um, with breakout rooms because it required like building multiple different breakout. It was just a disaster. This would be so much easier. Yeah. Um, why don't we all go over to the stage? Just because I'm I'm interested to use that as a space. So that means you have to go down and leave this room. And then go into the stage room. Yeah, it should be dragging it across everything. There we go. Hello. Hey. Come up to the main stage. My screen is doing something funny again. Get back on talk. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. That's worth noting. So if you pop the map on, you can see what this looks like, right? And it seems to me like this might be a way to to we should we should wait for Anna to get here hard to click on that and figure out how to get I was clicking and clicking and clicking and then you click with your mouse right yes e- exit I think that's what she there we there go she is. I think that's what she was trying to do it was kind of hard to do there we go there she, she comes come on up keep coming <laughs> there you are hi sorry my dinner my delivery <laughs> just showed up right as I was oh, perfect. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a weep okay. wobble or something. So, I mean, it's just the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. So we haven't tried this yet, but one of the things, one of the things that seems to me is that we could do something here together as a class, right? And then we could say to you, um, go up to, go up to, oh, KC is here. Cool. Where's KC? Hi, Karen. You found us. Hi. Come on up to the stage. Got it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's weird that the default is you're like so zoomed in, it's hard to tell like where you are. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's weird yet it it's so it then forces you to actually move around though, right? It does. Yeah. So I can't I think I think that's the idea. Anyway, so I'm thinking that for a class you could say to everybody, hey, just hang out on the stage for a little bit together. We can talk. And then when you want them to go, you mentioned Jigsaw, you could say, go find, there are only th four chairs at each table. Go find a, a chair to sit with, you know, a group to sit with. Mm -hmm. And then you could do that, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And then one teacher could be going around listening to the different conversations right? Just like you would in a regular classroom. I mean, and then they could share out. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then, and it, right. And then it makes clear where to come back together for the class, you know, just, just say come back to the mm -hmm. stage. So I actually, personally, I, this w was an interesting design, I thought. There is also a, a classroom and that, Jessica, when we teach and um, we use the classroom and what's nice about the classroom is the kid comes late and I can say, Hey, go sit in chair number 11, right? Um, because chair 8, 19, and 18, they're working together already and you don't want to interrupt them. So that's kind of nice too. But, and Ramon is here. He'll know to come up. <laughs> Hi, Ramon. Hi, Paul. How's it going? Good. We have a few people here. Come on up. So, it, um, so how's it? So you've been working. Hi, Ramon. Hello. Hi, Karen. R so Ramon, you... quickly introduce yourself to Anna. Anna, introduce yourself to Ramon and Harry. Just quick introduction. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Ramon. I teach at FI, SUNY FIT in New York City. I teach uh, web design, marketing, and comic books. Cool. And, and you've I, been... uh, good. And I actually also uh, work at Kumo Space as a content mm. writer. Mm. Cool. Full disclosure there. <laughs> mm. Cool. And you've been you've been messing around with it with your classes too. Yes, yeah. I've been teaching my uh, my my web design class in this space, and I realized that <clears throat> that. I'm not actually having them interact with each other, which is what the greatest advantage of Kumo Space is you can interact <laughs> with people. And they kind of just like, you know, uh, they just sit at their desk and then they come up to me and they have questions. However, um, we're supposed to do peer evaluations in the next week or two. And what I think I'm going to do during the peer evaluation when another instructor comes in I'm going to have them work on uh, on group projects because otherwise, because because I pre-record all my lessons because it's a coding class, so it's better for me to pre-record the lessons and they just watch it on their own and do the work and I just walk around and in case anybody needs help, which is not very exciting for when another faculty member is watching the class, but if I have them do a group project, then it becomes much more interactive and much more fun for the evaluator, you know, when they come in. Yeah. So, so there, there's a whole world of research and, and thinking around, does the technology change the way you teach or do you like make the technology fit into way, the way you teach, right? So it sounds like you're, this technology isn't necessarily what you needed for the way you teach, but it's, it may change up the way you teach. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fair so, enough. Yeah, I've definitely changed the way I teach. On the other hand, on... so no, I just want to say, on the other hand, for some of us who teach differently than Zoom sort of forces us into, um, finding other kinds of spaces like this might be an interesting, might fit our teaching better, right? Is right. Uh, it feels it feels interesting to say. Um, and just to say about Kumo I, Space, I, I've I've learned in 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 the week since we started using it that there are like sixty groups messing around with different things like this, right? So this is just our quick example of it. Um, if you find a better or more interesting one, let's play with that too, and we'll see what happens. 
Right. But just to say, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I, th Ramon. I think what's interesting about Kumo Space is that uh, my son just started the high school, right? Um, it's a new school, theoretically new friends, but he's never set foot inside the actual building. Is he in my school? <laughs> Which is your school? Harvest Collegiate High School. In New York City? Huh. Yes. No, he's at uh, he's at uh, New York Collaborative High School. Oh. Okay, similar philosophy. Yeah. The, so, so, go ahead. So I think I think the advantage and and the thing is not so much anymore, but in the first semester, you know, he made no friends, right? Because people just go do their Zoom or whatever they're using, and most of the time their cameras are off. Yeah. And so there's really no opportunity for them to interact with each other, which I think is I think a big part of school. Not you're not just interacting with the teacher. You should be interacting with your peers as well. And I think that's where Kumo Space excels. It's allowing well, the kids to interact with each other. Potentially it does. I haven't heard a lot of good, you know, yeah, let's let's see if we can build some stories where that happens. Yeah. I the um what was I going to say? Oh, the the one thing we have that Jessica and I have found is that um, when we say to two students, "Go read your journal to each other," right, and go off on that table and read your journals to each other, they turn their cameras on to do that without us asking to, and then yeah. and then when they come back to work with us, they turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not too surprised. And then, and then when we give them an assignment to do, they turn them off too, right? Like if they're if they're working on now comments, which is which feels right. But but it, but I felt better about saying, hey, when you're done with that, turn your camera on so we know you're done and we can come talk to you about it, right? So there's there's well, a more natural right. on off of the camera with this. Yeah. Maybe. What I notice is if, is if I join their little pod of, of them talking to each other, mm -hmm. that gets them into the habit of, of being comfortable talking to me face to face. So that when they do come talk to me on their own, they don't turn their cameras off. Now, granted, I'm dealing with college students, which that's different. You know, not everybody is. Wait, yeah. So. Well, you know but how however, different that is from your son, right? Have yeah. the habit of. These same college students also have the habit of turning their camera off in previous platforms. So, um, could you introduce yourself to Ramon, um, and then I'm going to go make sure there's nobody in the other room. I'll be back. Okay. And it's completely yeah. different. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just a generation of people coming up. There's more technology, which is cool. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's kind of nice. So, okay. Uh, sorry. Did, did you get to say who you were and what you do? Only me. Harry <laughs> did, yes. Okay. Karen. You're muted. Karen, you're on Karen. mute. You're mute. <laughs> Oh, cool. uh, oh, yeah, there we go. I'm Kieran Chaudhary. I teach at Harvest Collegiate High School. I teach ninth graders. Um, who have uh, never, who don't know each other and whatever. Yeah. And I'm really, um, like by the end of last session, last week when we were in here in, in uh, Kumo space, I was thinking, oh, it's too, it's like, to pre-beta, um, yeah, too many variables. To, um, but for some reason now that we're in this room, it seems so simple. It seems like it would work. Mm -hmm. And there are fewer of us. Maybe just you know pull a group together and say, "Hey, test this with me." You know? Yeah. First, um, my kids yeah. hate breakout rooms. Can you imagine trying to learn something and not being able to turn and talk? 
like they hate breakout rooms. They just find them so alienating. There's inevitably somebody in there who's like fake attending. They, um, they don't have their cameras on, so they so it feels like they're like under inspection by each other. But this yep. would be easier. You know, it's it's a, a really small thing, but the fact that there's no background in these <laughs> feels interesting too. Like it's just our heads. I don't know. Have you guys used this platform for for anything yet? We're met, we're getting there. We're we're using it for this right now. <laughs> but Paul, I think you've used it in your classes, right? Yeah, for two days. <laughs> I'm an expert. Yeah. Was that a failed or a successful experiment? I know. I'm 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 interested to play with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is there is the problem of the you know kids at work, and he has his iPad today. He doesn't have his computer, so that he couldn't get in. So. Anyway, we had we had different screens going on and stuff like that. So, but there's that. Anna, where do you teach and what do you do? Uh, hi, I'm Anna. I teach uh, ELD and English in uh, California at Berkeley High School in Berkeley, California. And Chris, yeah, I teach um, high school English and media production and photography at um in salt lake city utah um and it's interesting the three of you are here because your kids have been using youth voices most right now um would you mind um giving us a quick rundown on what the three of you have been working on on youth voices and i'm hopefully sharing my screen yep. and can show that as you're talking mm -hmm. um and let me try to get back out to the home screen here. So go ahead, Chris, what are your kids doing? Um, so um, they, my premise is that, uh, you know, we studied dystopian works before Christmas and then, <laughs> um, yeah, and then, um, you know, so we looked a lot at problems in society, and so now we're trying to focus on some solutions. And so we looked at a site called Solutions U to find uh, it's you know stories of solutions journalism uh, where communities have tried to solve problems, or at least partially solve the problems in their communities. Um, and so I thought that was a good idea for them to read about those kinds of stories and then they annotated those stories and now then we it. annotated those stories they put them up themselves just to say the, yeah on youth voices no on now comment right yeah yeah so um on now comment they they put those articles on now comment and annotated them and then they uh put those into study groups on now comment so that then like people, not necessarily like-minded people, but people who were doing the same um, topic, so to speak, using the UN Sustainable Goals, um, those people found each other uh, and then annotated, you know, commented on each other's articles as well. And then uh, today, I think it was. Did that happen was yesterday, actually? Did they, did they actually find each other in a little bit? Yeah, yeah, the study groups in Now Comment, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they were um, adding their kind of summaries of the articles and what they'd been annotating to the youth voices now. So these ones that are about, so these are your kids, right? Detecting breast cancer, uh -huh. police brutality, body cams, unsung. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Philadelphia, yeah. right? These are your yep. kids, right? Mm -hmm. So now we want them to we want to get this out there so people start responding to them, right? Is that yeah, yeah? So they also were supposed to comment on other people's posts as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so your students might be getting some uh, comments from my students if they're posting recently on new voices. Right. Karen is back. Hi, Karen. 
Yeah. So I just want to look at a post quickly and notice, oh, does this one have a link? This one does not have a link. That's okay. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to. I know, maybe it's hidden, but I don't see it. Well, I had like nine students that, uh, I don't know if that was you, Paul, or somebody, but nine different students wrote to me, and they were asking me to give them feedback about their articles. <laughs> so I spent the whole oh. day just going, going student after student after student after student after student, giving them comments. On now comment articles. or where? On now, now comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know some of those were mine. Okay. Those were all it was Chris's a whole bunch, yeah. but it was cool. Yeah, I, I think I I made a couple comments to uh, several of them, and then somebody else came in and made comments on my comments, which was pretty cool. So it was neat. Ramon, could you could you? Turn oh yeah, your Ramon, can on? you can you mute? Yeah. Oh sorry. It's okay. Thanks, Kim. Cool. We'll remind, okay, so here's one, here's one, and she's written about it, Sarah, right? Or Grace, sorry. That's Grace, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And then and then you click here. I was thinking that at the bottom of these, there might be, and I don't mind, I'll, I'll see if I can get some time and put it in. It might be nice to just say at the bottom, hey, come, come comment on the, the article I read. Do you mm -hmm. think that I, I think it'd be a nice invitation and they did make them all public, right? So that yeah, a kid could come and see the article and then also engage there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's bracket yeah. that. Anna, what have you been working on? <laughs> I mean, talk about yeah, if you don't mind. Not at all. Sorry, I'm starving so i'm just chowing down over here um <clears throat> if you want to eat first and we can ask karen to talk first it's up to you i'm i'm, I'm fine I'm okay good. um where are your so, kids now wait i'll just go to berkeley yeah. yeah so the most recent things that um they've published have been um top left yeah, yeah the B, that's right. <laughs> um have been these blog posts that i'm, I'm trying to I'll give the same title, COVID Around the World. So I asked, so I teach English learners. Um, I asked them to interview uh, someone from back home or someone they know who's not living here. Um, and yeah, that's the first four posts. I'm hoping to get a couple more up this week. Um, but I, I adapted, um, oh my God, Paul, what's her name? Louise Baus. Very good. It, it, that's exactly her name. Yes. Okay. Um, she did this amazing project with her ELs at the beginning of the pandemic. So I adapted it, um, made it less of like a research project and more of uh, focused on like the interview. So they, you know, interviewed someone that they knew uh, about the COVID in their country. It's been really interesting to see what, what they've kind of, um, what they've uncovered. Um, by, and by then the you way, do like a, sorry. No, I just want to say if you wanted to see, um, Louise Valso's um, curriculum, it's here on the side too, but go ahead. Yeah. So I used her curriculum and then I kind of made my own. And I think actually Natalia is put is doing the same project as me. Uh, she's using like what I did with my students. So it's sort of like an update of what Louise did. And I, I dropped out some of the things that, that um, they, they emphasized in their project so that we could focus more on like vaccine and government response, stuff like that. Um, which wasn't as relevant when when she, her kids were doing it. Um, so hopefully there'll be more more of these soon because I think she also teaches ELs, um, which will be. So I'm excited to see what 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 those kids uh, are able to produce. But they did like a compare and contrast um, between the U.S. and then the country or the place where where they um, interviewed someone, and then talked about like their own. You know, when I first heard about it, this is how I felt, and like what I miss most. So, so some personal reflection as well. And a couple of them without me prompting um, included, you know, pictures of the people they interviewed, which was cool. Wow. So, nice yeah. photo. Yeah. Um, one of following Chris's um, lead here, the, the guide for general response now includes a paragraph, you mentioned less research, but it includes a paragraph where it says, you know, I did a quick check of COVID numbers in El Salvador, and there's a link there. So there, that might be a way to kind of bring them 
bring that back into the project for them. Definitely. Well, I guess I shouldn't say less research. I think mm -hmm. we just refocus the research. It seemed like Louise's project was more about almost like a sociologist's perspective on like the whole country. And so what I was hoping the research would do is just focus particularly on the impact of COVID. So I, I maybe not less research, but just a different direction for the research because her kids did these amazing like PowerPoints with maps of the country and all this cool background information right for the sake of time and effort I was like let's just focus on how COVID has impacted this place cool so, yeah Paul, that's great thank you Paul can you say that again um what you said the what is it that has this new so um, it's a guide it's a guide which guide um, it's the, so I, I'll say a couple other things about the guides, which, which is new. Um, on Youth Voices Now, there is in the top right, something that says, um, copy to a new draft. So you can take any page or any post, a kid could do this too, make a copy of it and then re redo it, right? So, <laughs> and, and remix it. So. And I, I haven't implemented this everywhere yet, but the, um, where is it? Oh, the commenting guide. This general discussion response. It's just that um, Chris has been doing this for a while and we just put it into um, a little while ago, actually. So this fourth paragraph here says, do some, do some reading online about something that person you're writing to is interested in. And then what they write is, have you seen this? And then they make a link to it and they say, I thought you might be interested because that's sort of simple connection. Is that fair, Chris? Close yeah, to, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, but just to say, so the option now on these guides is to make a copy and it makes a copy in Google Docs, or you can hit, hit make a new draft up in the top, right? And what happens is a new page comes up and they can just work right inside of Youth Voices then. Um, oh, that's great. So that page doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. But, but if you want to free yeah. yourself from Google, it's possible. <laughs> just <laughs> playing with that a little bit. But yeah, what it does, yeah, so. If, but, but it's also true if a kid reads uh, an essay or, or a, a piece of writing that whatever, and they say, I want to write something like that, or, or if we can get that mindset, we could have them starting to just make a copy of it and, and then not copy what's there, but, you know, change it around, see how it's made and, you know, kind of go into it. I don't, I don't know for sure if that's useful, but it's possible technologically so with peers work yeah you could right so anna's kids somebody could read anna's um anna's kids examples right and where they interviewed somebody you could say hey i, I want to do that too you, you could have them make a copy of it and then they would say you wouldn't you know and then they could say oh this is what they did in the first paragraph and then in the second paragraph they did this they can kind of look at the format and, and think about it. It's just a possibility. I'm throwing it out there. I don't know. Um, certainly, certainly the guides work that way. Um, Karen, do you want to talk about what you're doing? And I think yeah, go you're ahead. there. Go up a little bit to oh, um, here's the latest San Miguel. One. Yeah. Yeah, hey guys, I need to get going. But... See you, Ramon. Thanks for stopping okay. by, and we know where to get you. Terrific. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Take care, Ramon. Bye bye. Thanks. Um, I clicked it, but I didn't click it hard enough. Okay. Kieran, are you? You're on mute, Kieran. Don't know how that happened. There you go. Sorry. Um, uh, my kids, uh, um, they've been um, working on poems of place. So I had them go to um, Youth Voices, um, NWPPLAC, 
NCES, um, National Writing Project Places in um, Youth Voices. Um, and I had them look at those posts, um, the poems that were there. And I told them, you're going to make one like this. So I hmm. turned it into, so um, um, this is a project that Paul, you created on. Uh, with a team, the Chris. Oh, with on. a team. Yep. With Chris. Yep. Um, so a, a team from, from National all the Writing country. Project. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, created this on LRNG. Um, so they um, read a poem, so they chose a poem in Now Comment. Um, and in Now Comment, there's a, um, a collection of poems called Places We Love, or is mm -hmm. it um, Poems of Place? Right. Um, so they chose a poem from a collection of about 20 um, that they liked. They did now comments on it, on both the, um, their, um, they read as a reader, and then they also read as a writer. They did um, three comments on uh, connections they made, and then three comments on literary devices in now comment. Then they, so they had read, they read the poem. Then second step, they wrote one like it. Um, meaning they um, gave themselves the same assignment that they imagined the author might have given themselves. Uh, they, sorry. They wrote one like it about a different place, but they used the same poetic device, devices. The, uh, the same poetic device um, or the same poetic idea. Um, and Harry lived identified. in Mexico for a long time, so he might like this poem. <laughs> have you been to San Miguel? Yep, I have, I know exactly where that is. I've been right in the middle of all that. I saw that and I was like, no way, is that San Miguel Valiande? And it is. That's that's a great place. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've been in the lower left corner of that. That's so cool. Part. Yeah. And as, as soon as you pulled it up, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So the kids um, are uploading the poems that they've made. They Along the way, they made a recording of themselves for themselves to, um, oh, to in order to revise. Cool. Um, they're, they're already responding to each other too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where can I find one of those? Just most, most recent. It's not any of these. Well, this yeah. One, this one has a lot Bacho. of response. Yeah. yeah. By the way, quick quick comment. I changed this image. If she, if uh, is it a he or is she? I'm not sure. She she if she hates that, she can change it back. But um, you you might start teaching them to use the landscape image if they can. It, it makes a less you know massive image on the top. Little little tip there. Okay. But yeah, but it's nice that uh, she's getting quite a bit of response already here. Yeah. And those are all my kids. That is a way for them to get to know each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. So that's great. Um, can we do habits of, of mind game together? <laughs> game together. So here's, sorry. Um, it's cool in that I hope, you know, I hope at least your three schools start giving each other comments. And Harry, thank you for jumping in on those now comments. That's that's cool. Yeah, no, that was cool. Yeah. So let me give let me give a quick example. Um, I'm, I'm sharing. I can't see what I'm sharing. So, yeah, I am sharing this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So here are the habits of mind um, that we talked about two weeks ago. Um, and um, with, <laughs> what are their names? Costa and Calic. There you go. Uh, I was remembering <laughs> their first names, but I could, okay. Great, and that that's kind of, they're worth, let me just, let me just point out a couple of things here. This, this here was written by one of Paul Hankins' students, right? Um, the, uh, what are the habits of mind? 
Um, mm -hmm. If you go to each of the, not each, there are a couple they didn't get to, but if you go to this click to see more, you'll go to um, their art, their chapter two from their book that Paul Hankins kids have have gone into and like told what they think persisting is all about, right? Pretty wonderful stuff they've written here. There's a little dialogue going on. So there is, if you want to go deeper with kids with each of these, that's a possibility, right? To think about what is persisting. Because you can also see their text about it as well. They're obviously, right? So there's that. Let me just say, um, this was an example that uh, Jessica and I did two days ago. Um, I'm going to forget the kid's name. I do. But um, let's go there. And so we gave him, he wrote a journal entry. And this is almost like, and I don't mean to, to diminish it. I'm trying to say it's, it's um, easy this way. It's almost like putting a star on the top of his paper, <laughs> right? Except that it's digital and it's, and it's meaningful and it, you know, it does all the things digital can do, which is it lasts forever. So what happens with the persisting one is it, it went to his, his profile, right? Stephen, that's right. And then, um, and then we get to see Ms. Hernandez Spears comment to Stephen, and then if you click here, it'll go to his journal entry. He's a he's sort of he's a chef on the Lower East Side, which is why it's hard for him to get to school. <laughs> and he wants to go to culinary school. Anyway, he talks about all that in his journal entry. Um, so she, we talked quickly, and she said, "I want to give him a persisting habit. I want to give him a striving for accuracy because he talks about how in his job." He has to make sure every dish meets certain standards before it goes out to the table. That's right? so cool. So, how come she's? How come Jessica is writing in the about the third person? Stephen talks I, I about. I don't know why she did that, <laughs> but you can do that or not. And then, so here's <laughs> here's the actual work right, that that he did. Okay. Oh my God! I'm currently at work. This is my nine to five. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Keep God. reading. <laughs> I like this. How one. old is this kid? He's 19. Wow. I'm the person in charge of the kitchen. The job is a lot of responsibility more than any. This is also more writing than he's ever done before because he's writing about you know things he cares about. Wow. Right. So there's that. So. Um, I give that example to say that, let me see if I can get back to the habits. So then what happens is after, and he hasn't given himself an icon. Once he gives an icon, it won't be that big blue S. But when you get a habit, your icon appears above that habit and you can go see that person's work then, right? So that works pretty well, all right? So what I want to ask you to do, and you have 10 minutes to do it, is see if you can do one now. <laughs> Where's the habits of mine page that you were just looking at? It's youthvoices.live slash habits of mine. It's also right at the top. There's a icon or there's a word that says habits in the orange menu. But it's youthvoices.live slash habits of mind. Just so, a quick question. Um, is anyone else's computer like blowing up, like getting very loud? I'm wondering if if running yeah. Zoom and Kumo Spaces is taxing. It is very taxing. You have Zoom on? Oh, yeah, but I don't need to. No, you no, don't. It, I know I don't have Zoom on. Yeah. But I had it. Video video is taxing no matter what. Okay. Yeah. It is. So, Chris, um, did you find it? Yeah. So I see the habits and the manage. I was just thinking, like, if someone okay. didn't know to hit, you know, dot live slash habits, 
They go habits, and we are doing evidence or manage habits. So, so here's yeah, worth asking. Um, can you still see? I, I can't tell what you can see. Can you still see where? Yeah, I, I can see your Okay, screen. so for students, they don't have the the drop down. That drop down is only oh, okay. only evident for um, us. Um, and manage habits is where you would go edit one of those. Um, and evidence is where we, you would go see the back end of any submissions that have been put up. So you probably don't have to mess with that. You just hit the word habits and you'll go there. Okay. Okay. And then so, but we're naturally, you would go to someone's post and then you would apply habits to it or something, right? Um, or you would need, you would need the URL for it. You could also get a URL for for um, for anything that's online. Does that make sense? But I guess I'm just thinking like, okay, so I think it's going to work like this. My kid comes across, a student in my class comes across a post and says, wow, uh, you know, that really shows that they're listening with understanding and empathy. I should somehow attach that habit right. icon or badge. So... What you do is you get the URL for that post or that comment or whatever it is. And okay. you could even uh, on the on the on the profile, you can get the URL for anything that's on the profile, too. I don't know if you know that, but anyway. You can get it. You can get a URL for any comment on you on now comment also. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you got you got to get the address somewhere. And then you then you come here and you say that one was that showed a lot of listening, right? And you click here, you find the person, and then you write the description. Do you want to try okay, it, Chris? Yeah. Try it. <laughs> so it works it works the opposite way of what I was thinking. Yes. That I would see a post attached like a badge to it or something. That's right. Because okay. you're actually responding to the person. I, yeah, I'm just trying to think like my students. Yeah. But I won't. <laughs> no, you can. Um, That's okay. I got gotcha. you. So uh, just... Just yanking this out of um, some experience in the past. Um, working with working with another student and saying, "Hey, what do you think you, the habits are that you have demonstrated?" Right. Okay. Um, and then and then have that other student go in and say, "Yeah, I agree with you." And then I'm going to give you a a habit for that. Right. It is sort gotcha. of a separate experience. And in fact, you don't have to link anything. Um, I wanted to keep it that easy, but I also. I think it's more meaningful if it does link to the work. Right? Okay. But it, yeah. But you don't have to. You could just say, "Hey, it's amazing that you went to that demonstration." You know, um, whatever. And you could add the links later. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to. Play okay. With this. Go for it. So, why don't you go off to a table by yourself, Chris, and work, and then we'll call you back, just to see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody go to their own table and I'll come see if you're doing okay. All right. Karen, don't take my table. <laughs> don't take your what? She said, don't take my table.
Hi, Harry. Hey. You could you could um you could give me one or Chris one or you well, I have okay, yeah. I found the uh I found the San Miguel L D L Oh, okay, great. So if and I want to after if I want to assign that a specific habit of mine, I have to go to the habits of mine page because I do have the URL here for that here for that. Yes. And that's where I assign the habits of mind. A specific one is at that page where the habits of mind are at, correct? That's correct. Uh huh. Okay. And then, okay. but you do need to know that that student's um, name and username. To well, find. it just it says Nico at the bottom. Yeah, I think that that's probably unique enough that'll work. When you type in Nico when you search, if you get more than one Nico, I'll oh. let you know what it is. I'm going to go look now. Okay. 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 It's it's Nico V. Is Nico V. In case okay. there's more than one Nico. All right. Oh, I see. Okay. Let yeah. me know if you have it. So, Karen, you know how to do this, right? You're good. Yeah. You do need to know the username, right? But what? What about the username? So, when you type in the the student's name, just find the name. If you don't know the username, more than one with that name may come up. So you, yeah. But yeah, you, you, you can probably identify it though, because no, I had to, I had to cross reference. I had to bring up my registration uh, Google yeah. Doc, and then look and see for a, a couple of them. Yeah, you can also, you can also because um, the scrolling down was like way too much. You can also go to their members page, and when you scroll across their name, in the lower left hand corner, there their username comes up in a little black box. Yeah. So, weird trick, but <laughs> all right. Yeah, you need their username. I'll come back. OK. Hey, Chris. Hey. You doing OK? That was a good question. I. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, yeah, I, it's like, like n nobody's been doing it. So right. that, that conceptual thing that you just, but do you kind of um, get it now or what do you, do yeah, you so I, I, uh, I was looking at the, the, one of the posts you were going over of Anna's of the kid from El Salvador. I thought, you know, like that was pretty good stuff. I was drawn to that one. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to give that person a listening with understanding and empathy and so I, I caught that I could grab the URL and somehow use it, but I think I have to have his username, right? Choose a member. So there's that too. Okay. Um, Is there a URL field or no? There's not a URL field. You just, okay. you just drop it in. So I'll type in Edwin. I, <laughs> I will go find what his username. So that's okay. If you go under, if, I'm clicking on his <laughs> name right now. Right. So if you go to the at, if you see the at under his name. Yeah, yeah. That should give you the username. Usually gotcha. it's the same as that. Uh-huh. And for your own students, you sort of know your code. You'll recognize, mm -hmm. I think. All right. Yeah. If you can't find it, let me know. I'll help Now, you. so then this the um, thing, the uh, the habit kind of icon will just go to him, not necessarily onto this post. That's correct. Okay, so that just kind of, that's going to be in his uh, activity stream? It'll be in his, yes, in his activity stream. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. So now I think I have typed in his name correctly, but um, it doesn't really autofill. I'm just, I'm looking at it and it, I'm assuming. It does autofill if you have the right name. If you. 
Um, a list of a list of similar names come up, and then you click the one that you want. Yeah. So maybe I mean I pasted in his whole name, maybe, and that's the yeah, issue. Yeah, that, that won't work. But like, actually, do you want me to go find his username? No, no, I got it. Um, yeah, but okay. like I typed in, it's like Edwin. Otis Solaria Otis. No, just type in Edwin, and then a bunch will pop up, and then you click yeah. the one you want. Yeah, does that make sense? It did, and I typed in everything, but okay. So I don't. I probably shouldn't put the at in front of his name. No, maybe. That's uh, okay, good. that's probably my issue. And then there's a. I'm going to go check on Anna. Gotcha. Okay? And then there's a box, tiny box, but you can make it as big as you need it to be. Okay. And then you hit the box underneath and you're done. Um, just a quick note. I'm in sure. Firefox right now and my pull down mm -hmm. menu, I cannot get it to go. It doesn't, it's not extending farther than what's on the screen. And I know there's names under there. Huh? Yeah. Anyway. I'll get back no, to you. That, that's worth it. Um, okay. Run into any problems? Whoops, you're on mute. Um, I think I was successful. I just went to her okay. uh, profile to confirm. You have to refresh it? Yeah, it's it weird because it's the text box like doesn't change, but then it says your thing was submitted. So I refreshed it and then uh, it popped then it, up. It popped up, good. And okay. it's showing on her profile as well. So I think it worked. Okay, so I'm gonna try to pour everyone together in the next okay. five minutes. So you, you can go to the stage. Okay. I'll... Oh, I can. So I think everyone can hear me now. Um, I can't hear you unless I'm right next to you, just to say. But um, you want to, if you've successfully done one, even if you haven't, <laughs> uh, try to your best and uh, come to the stage and we'll talk about how this went. Did you get one up, Perry? Yeah, I got it on there. It was I'm good. Gonna... Gonna... It was actually easy. It was for, it was, I did the one on uh, Nico and uh, San Miguel. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty, it was easier than I thought. We have a bunch of ELL kids that like literally came to our school today from Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Chile. I remember like seven different countries today. I don't even know how that happened, but I thought if I could get a hold of the ELL teacher, and maybe give her this lesson and then maybe also anna if you don't mind maybe i could refer her to the covid one that you did and that oh, would be interesting mm -hmm. if yeah it'd be cool if she could do that with all the students from the different countries i think that would be pretty cool do you think they came from the border i think so yeah because what you happened, they I, all came at once uh well we get a lot of kids that are like escaping out of their towns from pretty crazy situations like and they come right away so I have a feeling, I don't know, I get the uh, notice, you know, like they give it to me as a librarian so I can take their name and I can put them into the catalog, but it also, you know, like it's their profile and it's like they're from every, almost every country in South America. So, I mean, it's interesting that they all came at once. I have a feeling it's what it is. Now that you um, mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. That teacher will need much more support than just giving her stuff, obviously. But well, yeah. I'm yeah. Just saying, I, I, we're here I for that maybe, too. Yeah, she looked at it. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be kind of cool to see. I don't know. Yeah. So should we quickly look at see what people did? Or let me see. Sure. I'm in the middle of one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like <laughs> Stephen <laughs> or another student. That's cool. Chris, now I understand why um, uh, um jessica wrote it in the third person it feels yeah. it's just i don't know if it's the wording of the prompt but it, that was my instinct as well i don't think it matters either but yeah and so who's oh this is yours anna cool 
Yeah, I wrote mine kind of directly to the person. I think I did it in third person because I didn't know who was going to be reading it. So I did it for like a public, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't thinking about what I did it. But... So That's which do you think, why. which is better? What do you guys think? I think it depends on your purpose. I kind of like the idea of, I know that Chris has talked a lot about like portfolios or I feel like the language could be transferred so easily to something like um, for a wide audience, like um, resume or recommendation-y um, language. So, so you're sort of giving language to the student that they could use in their self-assessment later. Like, yeah, this is what this is what somebody on the internet said about me. Um, mm -hmm. but writing it to the student is so personal. I don't know. I think there's probably advantages to both. Worth mm -hmm. noting, they can reply and there could be mm -hmm. a conversation here as well. Cool. But, and Chris, where's yours? Did you get, did you get, out? um, I did an empathy one for Edwin. Do you have an Edwin? I have an Edwin. No, it was your no, Edwin. It was your Edwin. <gasps> <Yay>. <laughs> That's so accurate. I think it would be. Yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's all about the anime. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Did you want to put the link or no? Or... Um, I was. Uh feeling like I needed to wrap that up and get <laughs> That's here. <all> good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like I should do that link there. Can I edit that? I don't, I thought you could, but I don't know why I don't see the edit. Well, you could just reply and drop yeah, the link could, in the, re could do the that reply. Too. That's probably yeah. what I would do. Yeah, That's just do that. Call. Anna, Edwin's own country is El Salvador, no? Yes. So it's not someone else's country. Mm. Yeah, I don't know well, if he clarified that. I said someone post. else's point of view, if that's your question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I was just kind of. Yeah, that's true. That's that's empathy. <laughs> yeah, he did, well, he didn't make it clear in his post that I don't think that that's actually where he's from. And that that guy he interviewed is like a childhood friend. Um, that's good. All right. Oh, wow. Right. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to do. Sorry, I'm stuck. There we go. All right. So I was able to come around and talk to each of you individually. That was cool. I like doing that. Mm -hmm. um, that feels more natural, like a classroom. Mm -hmm. Just to say. Anyway, thank you for playing. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, I. Yeah, I mean, you know, just to say, um, I, I, I want to say that every time I hear that, you know, there's learning loss and these kids are lost and they're all failing, I, I want to say, like, it's a really good reason to do alternative assessment, right? I mean, it's always a good reason to do it, but right now is a good reason so that we can get some positive stories out there about kids. So mm -hmm. thanks for helping make that happen a little bit. Yeah. How, um, how, yeah. how, long, how long does it take to set something like you invite kids to come to the space and you how long does it take to set up is there anything prior like like i was thinking this saturday because i have to meet with kids from all these different districts for like an hour at a time but i thought it would be kind of cool to do this you know but so I, I was thinking both for the teacher you were thinking of and what you're mm -hmm. talking about the first step would be to have them start commenting on stuff they see here mm -hmm. um and if there is there's a i'll, I'll send it to you again there's mm -hmm. there's a um, Google sheet that you would need to get their email addresses right. and their first names on. You do yeah. that and you get me at the right time and it'll be done in two hours. Yeah. But if okay. I need to get a run in first, it'll be four hours. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah, I have to be with a bunch of seniors and like the other kids, I'm getting them ready for the SAT. So yeah, uh, I, Harry, I you, you, you'll yeah. get priority if you get you get that into me, we'll get it done. Okay. Oh, okay. that's cool. I just thought it'd be something new. It'll catch them off guard. You know, like doing something like this. It'll be cool to see what they think of it. So yeah. you mean, you mean for your, I was talking about using youth voices. 
If you're talking yeah. about playing with this space, you just yeah. make you just make your own space and play. Yeah, I thought I would just use the four or five kids that I have on Saturday as a guinea pig to see what they think of the space, yeah. and then talk to the ELL teacher later, you know, and like work up to like maybe having them use this with that. Yeah, because I think you're right. She'll need a little bit more than just saying, "Hey, go check these out." But if I could just play with the space with a bunch of independent students, you know, a separate from the class, it'd be interesting to see what their reaction would be using this as our meeting space instead of just like a regular Zoom, which was what normally what we do on Saturdays, you know. Mm. So, mm -hmm. Chris, you said you were on Firefox for the other one, but you're on Chrome for being here? Or are you I'm on, on Firefox. Firefox? You're on Firefox and it's working. Mm. That's good news. Interesting. Oh, Kumo space, you mean? Yeah, it's yeah. not supposed to work in Firefox. Yeah. <laughs> you just okay. broke the internet, Chris. There you no, go. That's, that's all good. That's all good. <laughs> Does it, are there any like privacy concerns or has anyone gotten pushed back from the districts or are we just kind of, is this like a pilot thing that we're kind of flying under the radar? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Um, for your own space, though you can you can have you can block anybody except if they have the school you are the school email address right mm -hmm. yeah. and so i would recommend that but it doesn't have that encrypt like zoom has some kind of encryption no thing. anybody anybody who gets the url can jump in here okay but you can also kick anybody so mm -hmm. easily and then they can't get back in until everyone's gone is what mm -hmm. they've done so yeah, it's it's sort of wild west. Um, <laughs> you did just it's say that, that it's a, yeah. You did just say that um, you can um, restrict it to you can make it authenticated to only um, a certain domain. Yes. Okay. That's so that's useful. Um, on the drop down, when students enter, though, there is a uh, Kuma space slash. Um, Youth Voices, and I'm thinking it'd be a nice place for kids to come meet each other, too, at some point. Um, That's a cool idea. Yeah. So, just to say. I feel like there would be high interest if we timed it correctly to, like, the idea to see some other posts, like, the people who have posted these or commented on these things. Um, that's a really neat idea. That's cool. Yeah, they'd be curious, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I kind of like this center circle tables out the side. And it would, like, we would all come in and say hi to each other. And then you want to go talk to the person who wrote that El Salvador piece, go talk to him over there on that table. And yeah, mm -hmm. I think that'd be fun. I'd love to see what, like, a bunch of second graders would do with this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> well, Kuma Space said that they're going to create an accelerator so that, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so that you can run fast. Anyway, my favorite thing here, though, so far is to, I get to walk people out. So come to the exit. <laughs> That's so weird. That's funny. Okay, hit the, you don't hit it with your, you don't hit it with your Thank icon. You. Everybody does that. Harry, move up. There you go. Okay. Okay. Bye, Karen. See you later. Bye. Thanks. This is such an orderly exit. I don't. You don't have to, guys. Karen, get off the exit sign. I can't and get there. We just move up a little bit. There you go. Okay. Just hit the hit the red button. There you go. Right, See, Anna. Thanks for coming by. Okay.